Hey, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what I, somehow I pushed the wrong button. I went live and I'm like, oh, I'm, like, I'm a minute early. I wasn't supposed to be live yet. I was running. I totally lost track of Tom. I was in my studio painting. <laughs> Marks for my mask. I just ran up and put lipstick on. <laughs> well, you look great. And we're gonna have to edit the front of this video anyway. So anyway, so delighted that you're going to be part of the, uh, the Riverdale Art Walk. And uh, you know, you've really kind of leveraged the opportunities by being in the show virtually and the tent tour and also part of the preview tonight, right? Yeah. So, right. so, so that's cool. I think it's great. It's a great opportunity for artists. Um, it's great that we've done all these virtual shows and now we can actually do some stuff in person. So um, as specifically with my work, I think it's so much nicer to see it in person, I think with most art, but in yeah. class, sometimes it's really hard to um, present uh, with photography so I think yeah you, you don't you don't get the details yeah. yeah so maybe you can talk a little bit about kind of for people that don't know what encaustic is and how do you do it and I can see some beautiful pieces behind you so so I actually have all work in progress here so I thought what I do um, maybe with this interview is just show, showcase my studio and kind of uh, this is kind of like what it really looks like <laughs> yeah well it's always good to see the real life versus you go you see those really clean tidy studios and you're like I don't know any artists who work that neat <laughs> Gets. <laughs> but uh, my biggest tool that I use is my uh, blowtorch. So um, for those who don't know, encaustic is basically painting with beeswax. And so you um, melt the wax and you can tint it with oil paints and then you paint it and you fuse every single layer. So some of my pieces could have like 40 layers on them and you're fusing in between and you're building up. But the beautiful thing about um, encaustic is you can, and other work too, I guess, but you can take away. So it's kind of like this play between um, revealing um, colors and textures and things that you've done underneath. And I do that a lot. I do a lot of incising and um, uh, do like oil crayons and stuff like that. And sometimes that comes through and sometimes I decide not to have that come through. So do you ever have an issue, like so with the blowtorch, obviously you put the color down and then you blowtorch it. Like, do you have ever a situation where it's like, whoa, that just blew it away? Oh, or is that part of the process? <laughs> yeah, that's sometimes part of the process. That's deep, 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 deep down. <laughs> so I'll have this that I kind of was working and I just kind of love it. And then also it's like, oh, it's just a bit too much. And then <laughs> something else, I end up using it as a background for something. Or I think that's the wonderful thing. I think I found, I fell in love with encaustic uh, a couple of years ago. And I think I was painting very tightly and not knowing what I wanted to paint. And encaustic, this ability that it kind of like has free flowing, um, let me kind of just relax and embrace um, the art form and just, uh, the techniques and learning the techniques and working with the medium, it's just been so much fun. So it's sort of like playing in the studio, but. Um, yeah, I was talking, I was talking, no, I was just saying, I was talking to an artist this morning. It was really interesting because she started off as a landscape painter and she said, with the landscape painting, you know, the end, the end goal you're looking towards and now she's abstract. And so she likes the fact that you don't know, you know the process, but you don't know what the end piece is going to look like. And I gather encaustic's a bit like that too, because there's only so much you can control. And so you kind of have a general it's vision of what you want, but. Some people work in encaustics and very much control it. They might use photography and they might use different elements and very much have a, a specific plan. Um, I don't really do that. Like people will say, oh, where is that? And my, um, my work, I, base, I say it's kind of reflections of my happy places because I spend a lot of time, I love spending time outdoors. So like on the water or um, in my gardens or just like hiking Ontario trails. And so that's really what I'm reflecting. It's sort of my experience with that. So I'll have, I'll show you for a second. I'll have, I'm gonna unplug my phone, hopefully I'll have a I'll have like- Ooh, Look at that mess, it's glorious. Yeah, here's my mess. <laughs> uh, work in progress. And like, these are my palettes. So I just turned my wax off, so it's hardening now. But normally that's melted. So I have lots of colors that I play with. And then here's more my muted and my uh, clear tones. So I play with that and uh, blow torches um, that I use. And pretty much the, all the work in here right now is in progress so I might take I take a lot of photographs so I might hang up some inspirational work and I get to look out normally outside my window which I get to see a beautiful park and some of my gardens yeah you have a beautiful and garden sort of, been. <laughs> I, well with the uh, gypsy moths right now I don't know but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, so what I'm doing is I've been doing uh, probably a lot of reflective work so I've actually have a lot of waterworks or waterscapes so there's a few pieces that are in progress Oh, lovely. 
And one of the things I've been playing with, I think a lot of artists have been playing during uh, COVID and race. I actually uh, biked around the Leslie Grove Spit near the um, gallery actually. And I um, collected um, stones and like washed uh, or like glass, uh, beach glass. And so I've been incorporating that into my pieces. So here's a piece that I just actually incorporated some stones on today and I'm gonna do some inking on there. Oh, that's so, so cool. Looking something like, where's one that's done? Oh, I thought I had one done on this wall. I guess it's not there. Anyway, it might, um, I probably will put a tree on there or something like that. And then I might do some inking. I've just been back doing some inking work again. So I'm doing some inking on some small pieces too. So I've been playing a lot. And then still, and so, typical yeah, so, color. So that, yeah, that's really cool. And I, I like the, uh, I love the inking pieces. And I think if I'm not mistaken, you kind of use a, a glass pen that was came from Italy yeah. for your inking? Yeah, so um, in Florence, they have beautiful glass. And I guess everybody knows that, but they have <laughs> um, ink pens. And I um, bought a bunch and we do creative adventures as well. And so I actually had shipped in a whole bunch so that I could do it in some of our encaustic, in my encaustic classes, that I could have students um, use the, oh. in, the glass pens because they're just beautiful. I, that's uh, actually outside my studio here. <laughs> I have yeah. another set up in my uh, house where I'm been doing my inking and um, board prep and stuff. So, oh, lovely! Yeah, I love the. I just love the work, and I love the. Uh, I love the looseness of it. And when you kind of see it in real life, you're right. You don't really totally see it digitally, but in real life, you can really see the translucent uh, layers and kind of the real depth that you get from the pieces. That I think is just wonderful. Yeah, I don't know. I've been having a lot of fun playing. I think a lot of artists have been. Um, challenged um, recently with uh, COVID and everything. Um, but, uh, and, and I think I have too, I think my work over the winter and stuff has been a lot quieter and a lot of water and blue skates and stuff like that. And I'm just starting to get into color and uh, florals again, just as flowers are, and colors are exploding outdoors, it kind of uh, reflects in my work. Yeah, absolutely, beautiful. And so what are you looking to show uh, at the Riverdale Art Walk? Are you working on kind of new pieces or are there pieces that you've been working on throughout the pandemic that you just haven't shown anywhere? Or? So these pieces that I just showed you in my studio, I'm hoping to finish those by Saturday. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, because they're, I mean, I've built up a lot of different layers. Um, and so I probably, I just need to clean these up and uh, just uh, finish doing some inking on them. And then some of my larger pieces, I did a series of landscapes. Um, that are quite large panels. I have one more in the works here. I don't actually have any in my studio here, but I'll just show you here. I have one sort of in the works there. They oh, sort great of colors. So that one I won't have finished. Um, it still needs quite a bit of work, but um, landscapes similar to that and um, maybe smaller pieces sort of like this one's in the works. So I'll probably finish that off. I'm also have um, the Blue Crow Gallery. I'm doing um, the Blue Crow Gallery summer show. And so I'm need to give Jody a few 12 by 12 so I'm doing a few of her um, options for her so but some of these pieces will be in the in this in the show for sure I think the and do you always include in ink or some of the some of them inked and some of them used kind of the found objects and so you kind of are you working on like three different styles at the same time or is it a very intuitive process yeah. in terms of the, the found objects is pretty new for me um the um, inking I've been doing for a while and I sort of really just do the inking on small pieces. I have one larger piece where I've done some inking on, but I find it just sort of further informs the piece. It's kind of like a, a friendly sort of nice little pop of color you can put on a bookshelf or on a small wall or tuck, tuck in somewhere. And it just sort of informs a little bit more when it's a, such a small piece. So I just find it um, actually sits really well. Here, I'll show you here a few here that will be in the show. There's, there's a few inks. So there's the inking one. So here's one I just finished last week. Oh, lovely. Uh, I love those turquoisey blues. Yeah, I actually have done a lot of turquoise. I've got a lot of blues here. I see these quiet ones, sort of all sort of reflection during um, COVID, really, I think. Just quieter um, pieces. And then sometimes I'll do something like this one where I actually worked on that last year. And then I just added ink to that this week when I was doing some inking. And then I'll do some floral ink pieces. These will be in the show. But I also yeah, I see some nice bright yellows, like yellows and oranges stuff. and stuff as well. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. some floral. So you'll see some of this. Yeah. And I did more of these in the fall. Like you'll see some of my fall. So I have a couple left of those, but uh, mostly you'll see floral and some of the uh, inking, I think. 
you know me. I uh, I'm the last. I'm a deadline girl, so um, I haven't figured out. <laughs> <yet>. <laughs> um, as for those who don't know, I also direct the art walk, so I focus on all the, all the other artists first. And I'm just sort of getting my act together this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I find that like the way I work too is I have a whole bunch of stuff like that I do different different stages. So I it looks like I'm not producing anything for weeks, and all of a sudden a whole bunch of stuff finishes all at the same time. Yeah. Right, so. I know. Sometimes it seems like you're further behind than you actually are in terms of the work process, right? Yeah, that's right. And I think I, I'm just so looking forward to connecting with people um, and chatting about art. Um, so if my booth's not 100%, if it's not super, super full, there's going to be other shows this summer that I'm excited about as well. Um, and then I'll always have um, items up on my website. So I'm just uh, really excited to see people. I hope people come up to the uh, tent tour um, on Saturday and Sunday. Um, it'd be great to connect with you. We'll do all like social distancing and make sure we have our masks on and follow COVID protocol. But yeah. Yeah. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it too. It'll be fun. And then your stuff's also, you've got a piece in the Leslie Grove gallery right now in the preview and your website, Angela Lane Yeah. And, uh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and yeah, and we'll see your stuff on the event and site. And so, which will open tomorrow. Yes. Right. That's right. Yes. <laughs> It opens tomorrow uh, morning, uh, but we're going to just do like open it very sh briefly during the opening tonight just so we can showcase the um, tool for people. Yeah. So okay. I need to finish populating my work there. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else you want to share with your audience? Uh, not really. Just uh, thanks so much for listening and I look forward to talking to you, meeting you soon. Yep. Sounds good. Thanks, thanks so much, Ange. We'll see you tonight. So, uh, and, and, and the interview with you will be on uh, the Artist Network uh, Instagram as well as the Riverdale Art Walk Instagram page. We'll put it on Facebook, and it will also be on the Artist Network YouTube site. So if you've uh, missed any of the previous interviews we've done, then we certainly uh, invite you to go and check them out. So have a fabulous day. We hope to see you at the tent tour this weekend. The map is on the RiverdaleArtWalk.ca website, so there's a ton of artists that are participating in that. Um, and if you can't make it out, if you're not in the GTA, then, uh, then certainly go and check out the virtual show, which was on until July the 2nd. So have a great day, and we'll talk to you later.